Welcome back to LimQ Plus, everyone. On this channel, I am 100%ing Breath of the Wild by a bit every day until Tears of the Kingdom comes out, which is today in 149 days. We're past the 150 day mark. I'm still editing my current main channel YouTube video. Uh, can you beat Breath of the Wild with only the Master Sword? I should be done in the next three hours, though, after recording this. So I thought today, because we're making pretty uh, fast progress, I'm actually on 29... Uh, sorry, 26.13% uh, and we still have so many days left. I'm going to show you my favorite spots in Breath of the Wild. I'm going to get some Korok Seeds along the way if I see them. But that's not going not gonna to be the super focus of today. But uh, instead, I'll show you some of my favorite spots with my probably currently favorite spot in the game, which isn't necessarily pretty. Which is weird, like, it doesn't stand out to me because it's extremely pretty. It stands out to me because it's extremely interesting. And then obviously I'll show you some other ones, but the first one here is going to be in Farron, close to the Zonai ruins. And it's extremely interesting to me because everything about this spot reminds me of the first Tears of the Kingdom teaser that we have ever gotten. Where the camera kind of zooms out of this dungeon looking wall um, after Zelda and Link find uh, Ganondorf's body. And I think this one here isn't particularly very interesting. Because it reminds me of this wall like a lot, like almost like too much to the extent where it seems like maybe this is that location, but obviously it's going to look slightly different when we play the game. This here is the place. Um, this like large Zonai looking wall, it could be part of just some arena obviously with the way it's shaped, it kind of curves around. We obviously got the Zonai like dragon slash snake statues here. But this part in particular um, really reminds me of that one scene from the first Breath of the Wild, I mean, sorry, Tears of the Kingdom teaser. It's also interesting how it almost looks like, yeah, maybe there was an entrance here before, but we can't access it anymore and we'll return here later after the Calamity at the beginning of Tears of the Kingdom. This is basically the entrance here going to the Spring of Courage. And of course, this might not have anything to do with it, but it reminds me so much of it. I tried like clipping into this wall multiple times. Unfortunately, nothing is there. But it does really seem interesting because this is not part of the Spring of the Courage in general. It's just a big Zonai structure. And who knows if we're going to be re exploring this in the future. While I'm here, I might as well get some extra percentage points. There's a shrine right behind this wall. And this has actually been one of my favorite things to do, by the way is explore the Zonai ruins. I feel like every time there's a new Tears of the Kingdom teaser slash trailer, I go to this location or to one of these locations to see if potentially I missed some small hint um, about a potential sequel in this area. I I'm so glad that they chose the Zonai, um, like the this area to be... Um, seemingly the center or like the focus of Tears of the Kingdom or at least somewhat more uh, involved because this area looks so cool it's so mysterious and you have so many questions so I'm hoping and I'm assuming some of them will be answered now let me move over here this is actually another one of my favorite locations in the game the Muvo Jim Shrine and I talked about it before um, I think this gives you one of the best views of the of all of Hyrule and it's basically the reason I like it so much is because it's combined with one of the prettiest like sunsets that you can see in this game. It's basically when you go to the shrine and you've maybe seen some of my YouTube videos before. I use this sort of shot uh, basically every time at the end uh, in my outro to all of the videos. And you can already see you have a nice overview over all of Hyrule. Pretty much, I mean, we can see Vana Boris, the Divine Beast, on the left. We can see an interesting shot of Dueling Peaks. We can see... Um, I guess the only things we can really see is... I mean, you can see them, right? All we have to do is, like, look to the right. We see Death Mountain and Varudania. And then last but not least, Mount Laneru. You kind of get, like, a whole picture from the Gerudo, de from the Gerudo Desert all the way over to the Mount, Mount, Mount Laneru. Now, um, I don't think I have any fire arrows on me. Otherwise, I would show you um, how cool this looks at evening. But we can already tell, actually. You can see the sun is going down and you'll see the sky here 
turns like particularly pink and purple compared to other locations in the game. While we wait for that, even though we can already, we're already starting to see this, unfortunately it's raining. While we're waiting though, I might as well get this Korok seed to get um, some progress done at the same time. And then I'll show you my other favorite locations. But for now, I do want to show you this one here in prime time. Which is happening, it's happening. Sun is gonna go lower and lower. And you can already see the sky changing drastically. I don't know why the sky changes so much more here compared to other areas in the game. I guess this is kind of something, some uh, specific code that they gave to all of the areas surrounding the Lurline region. Which this is where we are. Um, Lurline is basically just where I'm aiming down there. Which is also something that we can see up here. Lurland in general um, is a nice place. It, it didn't make it into my favorite places just because I'm so petty and I'm still mad. Uh, mad. I'm still mad about the fact that there is no armor there. Every village in the game usually has like some unique armor. Um, wait, the sun... Uh, is the sun rising or going down? I can't even tell at this point. I think it's going down. Let's investigate. It looks like it's going down. Uh, but you can already tell, by the way. Like, look how pretty this is already. But it's gonna get better. It's only gonna get better from here. Um, yeah, Lurline not having a signature armor set really annoyed me when I found that village. And it's actually some of the reasons that I was like, uh, I guess it's not an interesting village to hang out in. It, it, it felt incomplete uh, to me because of that. Um, but yeah, come on, hurry up, son. We're almost gotta... Wow, actually, on my screen right now, this looks particularly cool with the rain. You can kind of see the different reflections from like a pink reflection orange some of the greens we can see the golden sky and now now we're starting to have some uh, let me get a good view of this now we're starting to have some pink and purple settle in um and it's beautiful like i don't know if you uh, would disagree if so i'm surprised uh, we do have the extra rain here i don't know how much this alters how this looks but if you want a nice little desktop background or want to show somebody how beautiful this game can be i think this right here at the movo gene shrine especially at dawn and at dusk um is visually very impressive very nice it's not going to change too much from now um but i wanted to show you this and don't spend the entire video in this place but i think we can agree that this looks pretty let me take you to another one of my favorite locations um, I think I may have talked about this in the past when I was exploring there getting Korok seeds. Um, but this is my favorite building in the game. And I'm really hoping... Well, even if Tears of the Kingdom somehow played in the past and you would actually play the ancient hero, that would mean that Akala Citadel wouldn't have even been constructed by the time. And I already just spoiled it. A color citadel. Unfortunately, the weather here doesn't look extremely nice, so it might look a little bit more sad than usual. But this place is just so... this absolutely towering castle um, here in Akala uh, just looks so impressive and cool in combination with the orange trees of Akala. I really wish we could have explored this one a little bit more. Um, it's also quite hostile to explore this place because of how many guardians there are, but just look at this. This looks so cool. I mean, actually, now with the thunderstorm, I take it back. That might actually add to it. Make that even more towering and cool looking and intimidating. We got all of the bridges. And then down here, we also got the parade um, ruins, which they probably don't look as great. And this sort of weather. Um, there's a, the Hinox that you can fight here. But definitely a really big fan of the Alcala Citadel and I just wanted to show you that. But last but not least, I have one more location that really always stands out to me. If my controller didn't just die on me. That's the first, but to be fair, it's expected. After like 60 videos, it had to happen eventually. Um, wow. Oh, okay, I found it. I found my charger. This is obviously the professional video quality that you can only expect on the LimQ Plus channel, where definitely not every video is a one take because I have to upload every single day. But 
Um, I hope you bear with me. Also, I'm about to plug in my controller into my PC. Uh, just to show you my last, the last location what I talk about. So this was my Windows sound and not yours. I know every time I watch a video and somebody is uh, using a PC and you hear the sound, I, every time I think, oh, my PC. I just wanted to warn you, this is my PC. Okay. But anyway, let me show you my other standout location that I've been thinking about a lot. There's so many other locations that I could talk about from the hot springs in Hebra to the Forgotten Temple to some of the ruins in game. But this is another one that stands out to me. Um, Akala Citadel and Muvojim, mainly because of how pretty they look. They're like aesthetically one of my favorites. The first one and the one I'm about to show you now is more interesting to me in the sense of a theory crafter slash a mysterious perspective. And I don't know, maybe some of the lore guys out there already have a better answer for me. But the third, uh, sorry, the final location, number four, that really interests me is the Tabantha Tower and the Ancient Columns. So look, I don't know. Look at the Tabantha Tower, right? We see these like big stone pillars that are stuck in the ground, in the ground and they're kind of mossy, right? Some of them are literally laying right next to them. I have no idea why these columns or columns are there. Sorry, my English is obviously not perfect. You see more on the ground down there just simply chilling on the ground not sure if any theory crafter has covered this you see another column down there on the ground right right next to this ruin and then obviously we see more of these columns over there and now this is what's so interesting to me these pillars in the ground where the guardians go around almost to me look like big stone structures that have fallen from the sky. We see another one over there where you can get a Korok seed. We see so many of them. Some of them are tilted, some of them are perfectly in the ground. Almost like they potentially fell from the sky. And then these sort of ruins here, we only see in rare locations on the map. We see them at the Retag Zumo Shrine in Akala, which is completely on the other side. And we see a lot of them here. Again, some of them are slanted, tilted. And this ruin structure in general looks much, much older than the runes that we find in Hyrule Field. The runes from, let's say, the Lon Lon Ranch, uh, Marble Village ruins. Like, those are runes from 100 years ago. These are ruins from thousands of years ago. Additionally, they really remind me of the structures we've seen in Tears of the Kingdom. We can actually see some drawings on there. Some of them almost remind me of Skyward Sword as well. Um, or... Even, again, some of the uh, runes and the depictions that we've seen in Tears of the Kingdom uh, trailers and teasers. I might be off here, but I think it's extremely interesting how this debris is just on the ground, almost as some flying islands or something at one point crashed down to Hyrule. I could be completely wrong with this. I talked about this on my stream before. Lots of people disagree with me, but I do think it's extremely intriguing. And I love looking around in this place and see maybe I've overlooked the detail. What does this rule mean? Keep in mind, I'm not... A, a, like, what is this sword? Is this the master sword? Huh? Like, you know what I mean? Keep in mind, oh, a bird! It's the spaceship from Tears of the Kingdom. Du, 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 du. Okay, okay, I really have to stop. I'm getting too energetic. Um, and I'm just joking around. But I'm not a theory YouTuber, right? I hope you know this. Also, by the way, th these floors are nowhere else in the game. But I can't stop thinking why, uh, how this could be related to Tears of the Kingdom. The ancient columns and also the Tabantha Tower. Let me know your thoughts as well. As I'm getting this memory, even though I don't technically need to get all of the memories to get 100% map completion, um, which is the entire goal of this challenge, where we complete the game in 148 more days after this video. But uh, yeah, that being said, I need to finish my video now. It's almost 10 p.m. for me. I want to finish before 2 a.m. Uh, so I can get some sleep and premiere the video tomorrow on my Twitch channel, when I'm also starting another 100% speed run. But again, thank you so much for hanging out in these videos recently. The viewers of this channel have like quadrupled ever since I've done the first month. So that's really cool. Let me know your thoughts about these locations. And um, I hope I see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day.